ओके ये एलिवेशन पार्ट ऑफ द regular rectangular frame building is so one in the figure so what happens here this is part of the building this is the beam this is the let's say beam and all and you have a columns there is a level 2 this is let's say level 2 and level 3 there is a level above the column is continuously going so level 4 5 6 there is a level 1 ground level and so on so it's just part of your buildings right it's just they cut the part of the whole buildings right the cutting says that okay you have these columns you have these columns these columns these columns and these columns each columns has given you the distance 6.8 meters 6.8 meters center to center distance from each columns these are the grids it's just for us to notify which columns are there so columns a let's say grid a column grid b column grid c column grid d column grid e column and grid f columns this number two and three indicates the level like level two and level three so it's between level two and level three distance uh, three clear distance is 3.2 meters it's not clear distance but from this end to this end of the column is 3.2 meters this beam um, is two uh, 240 millimeters this from this end to this end 320 the the width column is 600 millimeters there is a design load given to you. These are, let's say, your dead load, live load coming onto the column. So they are given to you. And there is a moment, let's say, due to this dead load, live load, there is a moment given to you in the in the examples, uh, so on here. So there is a different loads coming at the top and bottom of the column, different moment coming on the top and bottom of the column. So I hope you understand these pictures, uh, the dimensions, the design loads and design moments to give on to you and some of these connections given to you. So that is figure number where the columns are 6.8 meter centers that is given to you. So columns are 6.8 meter centers each way. Reinforcement for the 460 by 660 at column C between level 2 is to be designed. So this example is asking that what is the reinforcement in the column C? That's the standard questions in the final exams as well. This would be the questions for you. What is the reinforcement if you have no one dimensions to you? That is nothing else. Any students should know in the columns what is the reinforcement in my columns, like actual steel going into the columns. That's what the beauty must be designed for the columns, right? So every student, any examples given to you, give me any columns and I can tell you what reinforcement is goes into this one given that you know the AS360 how to use it. Of course, I will tell you these procedures, but any columns given to you. Some students might say you might get column D. Well, you don't need to hesitate. You have different moment and different load and different things, but you can you can design it it's given that if you know how to do the C by understand this and do that explain. It. So some student might get this and some student might get this one. You can you can design it. You you can tell us what is the reinforcement goes into 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 this uh, C. So that's what the questions. You tell us what is the reinforcement. Column C two has a cross section. So one in the figure number five eighteen. So what was the cross sections? The same cross sections. What was the cross sections? They are uh, wants to uh, use same cross sections. You have six hundred. You have four hundred. You have. Uh, this reinforcement, ignore it. They want to know what is the reinforcement that you needed, but this 400 by 600 is given to us. The cross section is given to us. Okay, so they want to know what is the reinforcement. All right, so that reinforcement we need to find. Floor to floor heights are 3.2 meters. Yes, floor to floor height is 3.2 meters. Relative sway between the floors is not permitted. What does it mean? Like when you have a wind loading or lateral loading coming, your 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 column will going to sway. I can I can put one picture there to explain you. So there are two kind of uh, two kind of columns. Like if you have a frame, if you have a let's say this is a frame and let's say this is typical frame here. Now when you have a lateral load, incoming earthquake load and all, some uh, some columns are are frame are designed in a way that they will sway. Say meaning that this joint will gonna go by some displacement. They, 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 this is the sway, it's not prevented. Some columns, if you use the, let's say, retaining wall, uh, 
uh, let's say those um, uh, sear walls if you use that sear walls your columns on the dist load is this is a sway sway frame okay uh, this is unsway in that one these joints will not going to to move it will just deform these columns uh, this this will deform like this this will deform this will deform like this but this joint will going to stay as it is so this sway is prevented that was the meaning of this um, uh, sway and non sway frame okay so i hope you understand this sway and non sway sway meaning that you don't have any 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 these uh, uh, um, those shear walls to prevent the the lateral displacements that 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 this this frame will going to do this in here you have a you have your connections will not going to have any displacements uh, that is going so in our example what does it says in example it says that relative sway between the floor is not prevented so it's not prevented meaning it happened uh, it, it it is it is does this it it will it will uh, we can't prevent this uh, this relative sway so that they will sway all right so uh, the design uh, stress result so one has uh, determining the linear elastic inertia and column is subject to bending only about x axis so they said that they done the analysis for you and they have given you this load and moments for you uh, using the chart given in the figure number 5.22 where is the chart there you go this is a chart given to you in the examples it's not uh, they they provide you this chart uh, determining the required amount of longitudinal and transverse reinforcement so we need to tell us what is the longitudinal and transverse reinforcement right uh, we have 12 minutes so we can we can we can go give it to go and tomorrow it will be easy for me to explain this beta d is given to us 0.7 i will tell you how to use this beta d now column is subjected to a uniaxial bending what is uniaxial bending uniaxial bending meaning that if you have a column if you have a column like this and if your loading is either one of these principal axes let's say this is x x and y y and let's say this is eccentricity then the bending will happens about those one of the principal axis that is called uniaxial bending right there is a called biaxial bending biaxial bending meaning that if you have if you have a columns let's say x x and y y if you have a loading somewhere sitting uh, at a, some angle and some eccentricity then is called biaxial bending this is biaxial bending this is biaxial bending this is uniaxial bending meaning that if you have a columns and if your loading goes into one of these principal axis uh, x or y you will have uniaxial bending biaxial bending that your loading is sitting somewhere between the x and y you have biaxial bending so biaxial bending is not the word here we are using but i i thought that okay if you are knowing uniaxial bending you should know the biaxial bending as well as the unbraced frame okay that unbraced frame what is the unbraced frame new what that's way um this is also unbraced frame they are also called unbraced they use this word interchangeably so don't get uh, too much uh, confusion between sway and unsway they will some you sway this will um uh, unbraced and uh, this is unbraced and this is braced this is braced frame right so they can use unbrace unbrace meaning it can it can go uh, under this lateral load right where are we all right so that's what both delta b and delta c will have to be evaluated i will tell you what is delta b and delta c in a minute now calculate the effective lens okay let's start solving these examples now we have a 10 minutes so let's try to solve as much as we can uh, let's say calculate the effective length now effective length that equations that is we want to use somewhere here there you go effective length of the columns i can magnify this one to you effective length of the column close 10.5.3 it says that effective length of the column shall be taken k l of oh, sort you can't see effective length of the column l u shall be taken k l u so effective length is basically effective length is basically saying that 
you should have something effective length is denoted by le is equal to k lu and that is given in the close then 0.5.3 so it's something to do with k and something to do with lu now let me start uh, solving these examples uh, uh, given some of these details that we need to know okay now where, where are we going to find the k now to find the k look in the exam you're going to use these tables okay in, uh, in the workshop i will show you how to use this uh, these tables. Now, when you're going to use these tables, when you definitely know your boundary conditions, meaning that top is fixed and this one fixed, this one is fixed and this one pin, this one is pin, this one pin, and so on. And if it is brace or unbrace. So if you definitely know what is your boundary conditions in the in the columns, and we will tell you in the exam so you can you can use this table. But in our examples, we don't know what is the boundary conditions in our 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 example. Uh, we're going to use these tables uh, tomorrow in the workshop examples. So in the exams, we will not going to ask you uh, to use that methods that I'm going to show you. But you should know that method as well. You can't just get away without that one. So in that case, if you definitely know what is your what is your uh, what is your boundary conditions, meaning that let's say you have this grid given to you. If you know what would be your uh, pin or fix or pin or fix. We don't know, right? They are uh, they are not given to us, and we can't idealize that one. Uh, so in that one, you say brace columns, your k value is less than one. If you have one brace columns, your k value is greater than one. It's, it's a very huge decision in your design whether your column is brace columns or unbrace column because that will reduce your effective length or increase your effective length. Look at that. You multiply your k value here. Uh, by less than one, it's a huge decision in your design whether your column is brace column or unbrace columns because it will significantly uh, magnify your or your things. Now we're going to use these graphs on the next page given to us, saying that if you don't know your boundary conditions, like you don't know what is happening here and you don't know what is happening here, and uh, if it is unbrace or brace, so if it is brace column, you should use this graph to do the k value because you need to find that k value, right? That is k value we call effective length factor. The name of that k is called effective length factor. If it is unbraced columns, if it is unbraced columns, I show you unbraced columns, right? But it is uh, unbraced columns. If you have unbraced columns, let's say this, let see this point are moving. This point is moving uh, like that. In that case, you can use this graph. For, to use this graph, we need to calculate this lambda one, which is n rust and coefficient lambda one, and we need to calculate n rust and coefficient we can draw the line and we can use uh, you can find the k value okay given that we don't know the boundary conditions what is the um, boundary conditions at two ends so in that one we have unbraced columns because it's telling us in the example is unbraced columns i read that one for you right unbraced columns so if you have unbraced columns we're going to use these tables now in that tables we need to calculate this um, and rust and coefficient psi one and n rust and coefficient psi two. Uh, don't hesitate. No, don't worry. I will. I will tell you how to calculate those psi one and psi two. So psi one is the let's say n rust ring. Uh, this given here the equations sigma i over l for the column over this is sum. Okay, this is sum basically beta i over l for beam. Okay, what does it mean? If I draw the grid of the columns, let's say this is the this is the columns. Let's say I draw these three columns. Let me draw these three columns here. This is C here. There is something continuous here. There is grid C and grid C, and that was level two and level three. So in here, let's say this one is at the bottom. Uh, is it bottom psi one? Yeah, here. That's given here. So you have this psi one here. What is this psi one? It says that you take the moment of inertia of your columns at this particular joint. How many columns are coming? These columns is coming and these columns is coming. So there are two columns are meeting at this joint. So you need to sum the moment of inertia over length of that columns divided by you have beta that I will come in a minute divided by moment of inertia of the beam and moment of uh, over L. So there are two beams coming on here. So that joint. So you have a 
columns there are two columns that you can have a moment of inertia of that columns divided by length of that particular columns divided by these beams okay so that's what it's saying if you want to calculate this n restraints psi one that is given here uh, on this one you can you can use this equation so it has to calculate the moments so let me calculate the moment now uh, let's you you know this one right so let's say psi one equal to i let me give the name here let's say this is column p uh, column p will work or let me give the number i and number two here so let's say i one that is here over l one that is columns plus i two columns over l two columns uh, and you let's say this is beam so beta let's say this is i1 again beam and this is i2 beam i i beam over l beam plus beta of i22 beam over l22 i hope it is makes sense right? you you understand that this how many beams and columns are are connected at this particular joint if you have one more beam going here you need to add those beam if you have a columns are are, are attaching here so how many columns are sitting at that particular grid point that's what we are we are talking about so let's say we need to calculate this moment of inertia of the columns now there is one table that i like to introduce to you that is called table 6.2.4 we need to go to this section 6.2.4 mm, there you go uh, this called uh, stiffness of laterally forced resistance element stiffness uh, on this cross sections we need to use this effective section property effective section property i effective uh, as a proportion of i gross so what does it says that you need to use 0.8 of ig so let's say you have a columns uh, we don't know this n star ag let's take this one we will verify these assumptions later so let's say you have these columns in that columns i want to take i let's say this ic let's put this ic this is ic let's say ic is a columns equal to 0.8 of ig that is effective columns moment of inertia where is coming from that is coming from table number 6.2.4 i hope so far so good there is no any any issue uh, we might need to stop uh, but let's finish this ig so ig equal to uh, 400 by 600 cubed over 12 where is coming from because if you know this cross sections was given to us in the example so b and d cubed over 12 that will give us that will give us 400 times 600 uh, cubed divided by 12 uh, that gives me 7 to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 2, 0, 0 times 10 raised to 6 millimeter power 4 times by 0 0.8 gives me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 5, 7, 6, 0 times 10 raised to 6 millimeter power 4. Right, so that is basically IC. Right, we calculate this IC value right now. So you can use this one here, use this one here for this moment of inertia that we just calculated. Right, okay, so we're gonna stop here and uh, to be uh, 3400 times 280 cubes. Okay, so you have a, um, so you have a B uh, of here. So you take the half of this 6800, that is your B uh, over 280. So I think if you just take it, um, the uh, 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 I think that is 240 and there is another another 40 here in between so you have 280 as a as a diff and the width of the beam that these particular columns will just take it half uh, on each side 634400 that is B and D is 280 cubes that is just taken from here in the middles so that's if you just simplify that 3400 times 280 cubed over 12 you get 6219 733.33 millimeter of power 4 and we can go back to the table back again uh, i think the table was 6 point something 
yeah, 6.2.4. So in that tables, we are going to uh, calculate for the beam. Now for the beam, you have a beam and walls. You have 0.4 IG. So that's uh, for beam and wall. So let's say I11 and I224 beam. Uh, you have 0.4 IG. So 0.4 times these numbers, uh, which is which is in my calculator times by 0.4. It gives me these numbers here equal to 2487893333 millimeter power 4. Right, or you can write this 2488 times 10 raised to 6 millimeter to power 4. So we found these I values for needed to calculate this. Um, uh, let me go back to the section 10 here to calculate this um, uh, gamma 1 and gamma uh, 2. So let's say the gamma 1 is at this particular joint. Uh, you can have a sum of the I over LC over sum of I over beta L O for the B. That is just given here. That is just given here. So uh, I1, so that columns here. You have a, we calculated that 57160 times 10 raised to power 6 over length, you have 3200. Plus, where this is coming from? So, if you are talking about this column C, you have these columns here. So, that is for this one. These columns here, same thing 57160 times 10 raised to 6 over 3200. 3200 is coming from here. That's the length given in the examples length of the column so that is the first one if you if you have different length here different length here you can use different length different area or different moment of inertia use basically the i over l of these columns i over l of these columns the sum of the uh, i over l at that particular joint and now beam so you have beam here so that we're going to do that uh, two beams Now beta, I need to explain you that beta. So if you go to the table, beta is a fixity factors given here, is given on the tables uh, on the back page. So if you come back here, uh, fixity factors, uh, uh, you will have a uh, fixity vector, beam or slab are both in a brace frame and beam and slab for unbrace frame. So in unbrace frame, uh, rigidly connected to a column. So those are part of the columns right so these are rigidly connected with the columns uh, your beam and slabs so in that case you have a unbrace uh, beam frame because it's given in the examples uh, your relative sway is not prevented so therefore it's unbrace in that one is not pin is not fixed it is between rigidly connected to a column so therefore the beta is taken one so let's say beta is 1, uh, I for the beam, we already just calculated I for the beam, uh, that was here, 2488 times by 10 to the power 6 over the length is 6800, the beam length is given to you, so on, 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 on these sides you have 3400, 3400 total is 6800, so that is Plus, and then you just repeat the same thing because we have two beams 2488 times 10 raised to 6 over 6800. Right, so let's uh, work it out. Okay, uh, it will give me 4.9. Uh, that is gamma 1 on your, on your, on your, on your dead sides, uh, which is the, at the bottom end. We're going to repeat the same procedures to find the gamma 2. Now let's find the gamma 2. I think exactly the same procedures. There is not much difference here because we have identical identical connection here. Whatever the columns here is exactly the same. So you have same scenario. You have this beam, this beam. So we can have exactly the same. So your gamma 2 would be 4.9. You can repeat this one if you like, but we have gamma 2 equal to 0, uh, 4.9. Now gamma 1 is 4.9. So you can come back and let's say take a ruler. Let me get my ruler. 
you can come back here and just put 4.9 so if you just look at this one here 4.9 draw the line across this is for this is approximate okay you can't have this exact thing so you can draw the line across 4.9 gamma 2 is 4.9 across in between you will get uh, k equal to 2.2 so you will get this 2 and this is 2.2 somewhere 2 and 2.5 is between 4 and 6 because you have 5 it's almost 5 so between 4 at 4 you have 2 it you have a uh, 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 some value here so if you just cross it up to here 5 and if you just make it at 5 you will get around this particular point you get 2 point um, you get k equal to 2.2 coming from figure um, uh, 10.5.3 c okay if you look at the figures back on these tables you can make sure that this table same thing 2.2 look at that right so we are very close to the hinge supports we have almost pin supports right so it's almost very close to here so that was verified that whatever we are using this table is very conservative so that will be more accurate but still it's very fine that if you are folder away then you will have 2.24 on brace so that's that's kind of you can take this value from table bypass all these uh, all these calculations that you done as I mentioned in the exams uh, you can bypass the details so that is k equal to 2.2 uh, let's start solving the effective length effective length l e equal to k l u where is coming from if you just go to the close uh, 10.5.3 it says that l e equal to k l u now k equal to 2.2 now the lu that you're going to get is the lu if you go back to the start of the standards you will say that lu would be your uh, clear spacing lu equal to clear spacings between the columns clear spacing meaning if you look at that this length is given from this end to this end right clear spacing meaning from this end to this one so we just need to 300 uh, 220 take away these 240 that is 240 here so that's we're going to find a clear spacing uh, oh, so actually 320 so you have uh, let me explain you that right okay 3200 take away 320 what happens here the clear spacing uh, there you go so the clear spacing would be from this point to this point so you have a clear spacing of your columns which is not part of these beams just the columns length that is lu if you go to the start of the standards they will tell you the clear spacing so 3200 take away this 320 will give me this clear spacing of your columns so lu so if you just use your calculators 2.2 times 32 take away 320 will give me uh, 6336 millimeters is your effective length now let's say once you calculate the effective length um, so these are for your interior columns interior columns meaning these are all your interior columns one two three and four are your interior columns this one your exterior columns look at these are at your outer perimeter okay so this effective length that you get it for interior columns interior columns all the interior columns has the effective length of 6336 uh, let's say for exterior columns let's work it out exterior columns what does exterior columns means these columns outside of your frame uh, like column a and column f right the grid at a and grid at f now for for these exterior columns, our figure becomes like this. This is a beam, this is a column, this is a beam. And you have this gamma 1 here, there is a column going on here, and you have gamma 2. Unlike in the previous one, where columns, you have this kind of scenario where you have gamma 1 and gamma 2. You have column here, you have column here, you have column here, you have beam here. But you don't have any beam here that is going uh, on the left of that exterior columns because you can see that. 
there is no beam here, there is no beam here. At that connections, you have this column, this columns, and only one beam. So basically, the procedures are almost same. There is not much difference. Only difference here that you can see here, gamma one, you have two columns, column one and column two. So that will stay five seven six zero times ten raised to six over three two plus five seven six zero times ten raised to six over three two zero zero over now there is these are two right because you have these two 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 beams but here you have only one beam so you just take it one two four eighty eight times ten raised to six over six eight zero zero i hope you understand that because you have only one beam connected at this particular joint so you have you have only only one beam you are not taking this one because you don't have another beam that is for interior so if you just work it out that will give me 9.8 use your calculators i'm not showing in the calculators right now here uh, same thing uh, for this the uh, top joints here at, at, at this particular joint you have identical beam here identical columns here so you have gamma 2 equal to 9.8 you can just write this one up now you have right, gamma 1 question. and gamma 2 9.8 now let's go back to that figure again i got a question Rupu. yes go ahead please so did you, your l stay at 6800 even though you've only got your beam length is like you're contributing beam length is half okay that's uh, i think i did not make it clear i think i made a mistake in the last one okay now here uh, the beam length that you're going to get it let's say in this scenario uh, yes. you have this one you have this beam is 6800 then you have another column here you have this beam is 6800 if you are calculating this gamma one then you have gamma one equal to this length let's say this is length l1 and length l2 for beam you take this one yep you take this one for this so gamma one equal to that beta i value over this side let's say someone said this is 5000 and someone said this is 6000 so on this side, you put 5,000 plus beta i, you know i, well, you, I'm not writing that i, and you this side, you put 6,000. Does it make sense? Oh, okay, so, it, yeah, yeah, okay. Yes, yeah. so if, if, if someone, if, if the building grids has different length of the beam on that particular joint, you put this one. Similarly, let's say this length of the column is 3,000, and someone said that this column is uh, 2,500. Over here, you put, uh, I over 2500 plus I over 300. Yeah, I get it. Yep. You got it. So at this joint, these columns, I of these columns, if you have different, let's say someone said that this is 200 here and this one is 300 here, you can find different I. I of these 200 BD cubed over 12 over 2500 plus I, moment of inertia of these columns, divided by the length of that columns over beta you know how to find the beta from the tables i if you have different b value you can calculate the i for this one divided by the length of that beam plus i of this beam beta is same for both because these joints are here i over the length of this beam does it make sense yeah okay is it clear so if any scenario given you can you can calculate now in here scenario you have these columns and that is 6800 uh, basically there is nothing here 6800 so you have 6800 these columns is 3200 here 3200 here this column is 3200 here 3200 here so that is 3200 3200 make sense okay so gamma 1 and gamma 2 is 9. Point you can repeat you can find 9.8 somewhere here uh, close to the 10 let's 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 approximate 10 so you can have a 10 line here uh, going up to here and across 10 so it's intersect at 3 because just take it 9.8 who gonna draw 9.8 it's very difficult to it's close to 8 close to 10 so just rounding off 10 you're gonna get this 10 here go the gamma 110 goes to here and you will see this k value equal to 3 right so for the uh, exterior columns uh, sorry yes exterior columns your effective length value would be uh, effective length is equal to k value i show you that equations right so 3 times 
times this 3200 take away 320 which is your uh, which is your uh, which is your uh, clear uh, space between the clear space of the color or clear lamp so 8640 millimeters and that is your exterior color right so what we done so far if someone said that what is the effective length for interior columns, that is the effective length for interior columns, that is the effective length for exterior columns. Buckling load, close 10.4.4. So let's say buckling load, that is denoted by NC, and that is given in the close 10.4.4. Now, for this buckling load, we need to find some variables, variables, let's be writing down this equation, pi square over L e square, 182 D0 uh, moment over one plus beta D. Okay, so that's the equation. So I just get it from close 10.4.4. Now let's say uh, D0, let's work it out. Effective lens, we know D0. What is D0? Basically, if you draw the cross sections 400 by 600, you have this reinforcement here. We don't know what is the reinforcement. You have this 74 given to you. Where is given to you? If you go back to our example now, and this is the cross sections we are working on. So you have 74 given to you. So if you want to find the D0, if you just want to find this D0, that is basically 600 take away this 74. That gives me, that gives me 526 millimeters. So this done, this done, this done. Let's work it out the next one. Now, uh, we need to use that chart that I just explained it to you. That let's say you have N star. N star is your design axial load that is given to you in the examples that has a value of 2000 kilonewtons. Look at that, there is a 2000 kilonewtons given to you. So uh, N star is 2000 kilonewtons m star m star is given to you 360 360 kilonewton per meters your m star value is 360 kilonewton meters now we're going to make a one small assumption assumption saying that let's say reinforcement ratio which is let's say whatever the area of the steel area of the steel over the gross area that is the reinforcement ratio whatever the steel area over 400 divided by 600 let's say that is 0 0.01 we don't know we just say that this is assumption we're going to validate that assumptions later we're going to validate that whether it's correct or not but let's start with with that assumption so if you in the exams this chart will be given to you as well so this you don't need to worry about this uh, charts to you so in here we have n star that design one is 200 so that is your n star 200 so you can draw the line across 200 and you have m star m star value would be 360 so let's say about 400 so you have you have at this particular point two two thousands and let's say 360 you have you have you you, you are locating it here so that graph can be used to calculate your reinforcement ratio and and start so if you really want to multiply you can multiply and you can just go ahead this one but i think it's um, it's not um, it's not it's not hugely this is just approximate i will show you how it go not going to affect it so now we have a uh, let's say this reinforcement ratio uh, where are we So uh, let's say we, we found this one, but we, we can't use this uh, reinforcement equal to 0 0.01. So let's calculate this 5 value for, for 5 MC. So we need to get this 5 MC. That's what I'm trying, trying to get it get it from our, our example. So let's say you have a, uh, where is my graph? Let's say you have 2000s here. And we say that, okay, our point was here, but we can't take that point. So 0 0.01 is the minimum that we assume, right? 0 0.01, that's minimum. So 2000s, and you come here 0 0.09 at this particular point. So if you take a ruler here, 2000 is, is that. And if you come here, 
uh, and if you draw the line from here, which is the reinforcement, you can find around uh, four, 500, around 496 approximately your moment capacity. So that's capacity that you're going to get it is 5mc equal to 495 kilonewton per meter for d1 n star value of 2000 kilonewtons and your rho minimum is 0 0.01 we validate this as options that this is the uh, reinforcement ratio we validate that as options later on so these uh, calculations 495 kilonewton per meter that's basically coming from this design from this design charts all right, uh, beta D is given in our examples. Uh, there you go, beta D is given in our examples. So that is 0 0.7 straight away. We can use it to substitute that value. Okay, let's do, uh, let's do the interior column first. Let's do interior columns first. So you just plug the values, pi square, Effective length for interior columns. We calculated the effective length for effective length for interior columns. Uh, six three three six square. One eighty two d. We just calculated five twenty six five mc. We get it from the chart. There is an assumption here four ninety five, and just convert it into newton millimeters because that is kilo newton meters. So times by thousand times by thousands to convert into kilonewton per meters, one plus 0.7 given in our, our, our questions. So in that case, you get uh, 6853032 newtons and just convert it into kilonewtons, 6853 kilonewtons and that is for interior columns. Now, same procedures we're going to follow. All the parameters are same except this effective length for ex uh, exterior columns. Okay, exactly the same scenario we're going to follow. Let's say exterior columns, you have different effective length. Sorry, Viper, what formula were formula you using for that? Wait, where did you? Oh, right, no, 10.5. Okay, so that NC equal to. Uh, pi square effective length for this. Um, what uh, actually is the buckling load? Is it where you where the column breaks or? Uh, the question is about buckling load. Yeah, what actually is it? Is it just where the, the physically the, break? the the buckling load physically tell us that at this particular load when you have six eight five three kilo newtons load coming on to your column that your buckle will going to uh, so your column will going to buckle okay yeah so that is your buckling load so the, the, the buckling load that's just specifying that if your columns will subjected more than 6853 kilonewtons it will it will it will buckle uh, significant that's the just uh, uh, loads that uh, put the limits there does it make sense yeah all right, and L E square for exterior columns was eight six four zero. Uh, we calculated that. Eight six four zero that we calculated. Uh, bracket one eighty two D we calculated just now. Five twenty six. Uh, four ninety five times 10 raised to 6 newton millimeter, 1 plus 0 0.7. And this uh, calculation give you 3685 kilonewtons, right? Now we have all the precipice that we can calculate this moment magnifiers. Oops. Now um, we can just go for the next step, which is the moment magnifier. All right, let's do this moment magnifiers uh, in our, in our, uh, uh, where is the equation for moment magnifier? Let me find that. Close number 10.4.2. That 
there you go moment magnifier for brace column so i think we need to check the moment magnifier for both both brace and unbrace and making sure that uh, we are not uh, overlooked by each other so i will i will explain you that uh, in a minute so let's say row b for let's say take the moment magnifier for brace columns km over 1 minus n star over nc and that whole thing should be greater than 1 so once we calculate that uh, one. So that is coming from close 10.4.2. Let's say if I want to calculate that uh, uh, moment magnifier for brace columns, you need to find the Km first. Km is the equations 0 0.6 minus 0 0.4 M1 star over M2 star. And that's just given here. Now that shall be taken not less than 0.4. Okay, except so you can just read about all this. Uh, value. So now we're going to talk about M1 star and M2 star. So the definition of M1 star over M2 star given here ratio of smaller to the larger of design bending moment. So there is something to do with the smaller to the larger. So let's say M1 star over M2 star. So if I go to the our column, the smaller. So smaller would be 270. We are designing grade C. So 270 over 360 smaller to the larger moment for your columns at the two different ends. Now in that case we have a notes given here is negative when the column is bent in the single curvature. Single curvatures mean that if you have uh, columns bent in the single curvatures that is a single curvature. So let's say some uh, some boundary conditions given to you. Double curvatures is is given in that format. How do we know the columns going to do the single curvature or double curvature? Look at the moment direction at two ends. So if they are uh, going in this direction, opposite to um, each other, then you will have this single curvature. If I have a moment going in this direction, and let's say another one also going in this direction, same one, you will have double curvature. So I hope you understand single curvature. Look at the directions given to you that will push these columns in the single curvature format. If I have one of these, let's say, going in the same directions, you will have double curvature. So in our case, we have single curvature and the single curvatures would ratio taken to be negative when column is bent in a single curvature. So that would be negative. So that will give me 270 over 360, which gives me 0 0.75. You can substitute that value here, 0 0.6, take away minus 0 0.75. You get Km value. Uh, let me make sure that I'm on the right track. Km value, you get 0 0.9, right? So you have Km, you have N star, you have NC, so we can find the moment magnifier rho B. Km was 0 0.9, uh, 1 minus N star for your columns would be 2000s given in our examples uh, 2000 kilonewtons given in your examples so you have 2000 kilonewtons over uh, your buckling uh, uh, loads uh, is uh, 1.27 so let me go back and check your buckling loads that we calculated so now let me explain you this okay this is when you have a where was that uh, our load okay 6853 now i will explain you how why i take 6853 in a minute why not another one you get 0 0.60 Right, actually that is correct. Sorry, what? Uh, Two thousands divide by six eight five three one take away answers point nine divide by answers you get one point twenty seven. Now look at this um, um, uh, conditions here. This all the interior columns, this all the interior columns would be classified as a brace because what happens here, this uh, 
will be braced by those interior one. But when you have exterior one, they are unbraced because when you have when you have these ex, uh, lateral loading coming on to here, these try to twist these exterior columns, right? But this one, they will be prevented partially through those exterior columns. So therefore, in the interior column, therefore I use these six, eight, five, three, four interior columns because they are here brace columns for moment magnifiers. When you have a moment distributions happen on these frames, what happens here? These will classify as a brace columns internally. They are braced with those external beams and, and, and columns. So you have these brace columns. Therefore, I use 6, 8, 5, 3, uh, particularly when I want to calculate for the brace uh, moment magnifier. Now for unbrace, we're going to follow the same uh, close that is given just below here. Now for unbrace, which are exterior columns, Uh, if you turn the page over, unbrace columns uh, for each stories, you have these equations given here. Rho S equal to 1 over 1 minus sum of N star over sum of N T. Right, so let's say sum of N star, which is all your design load. Uh, the design load is given to us. One one zero zero two thousand kilonewtons plus two thousand kilonewtons plus two thousand kilonewtons plus two thousand kilonewtons plus one one zero zero kilonewtons. That is your sum. Sum of NC, the buckling loads. I think the buckling load that we calculated. Uh, for let's say for exterior columns we calculated this was interior columns and exterior columns was uh, okay let me find it out so some of the NC uh, I can explain you that 3685 I can explain you that what is that here so for we calculate the buckling load for those uh, those columns so we have 3685 for exterior columns and for interior columns I think uh, we calculated around uh, uh, 6853 so that is interior columns so the bu uh, buckling load we calculated here buckling load we calculated here uh, 6853, 6853, 1, 2, 3, 6, 3, so 6853, 6853, 6853, uh, 6853, one more, and then you have the last one, 3685, so that is sum of all your buckling loads. If you sum them all up, you will get the answer of uh, 10 uh, If you work it out, it's just the maths now, uh, 1.41. And the, finally, the moment magnifier would be maximum of your brace and unbrace. So maximum of, uh, we calculated that 1.27. And we calculated 1.41, so you get 1.41 as a moment magnifier. Now, um, we have a few more things, but I think I can uh, stop here. And I think the header will discuss about the test. I have a couple of pages to go, but that I will discuss it uh, in the next half an hour. Uh, go through it, not writing it up. I will go through it by yourself. Okay. Uh, I will go through you uh, by talking about. The, so, so far, what we've done. We calculated uh, we calculated this moment magnifier. Uh, that is basically all this procedure calculating the buckling load and calculating all this precipitate that you needed for calculating this moment magnifier. Now, once you have this moment magnifier, 
you can just have to this is final steps that we need to find out the reinforcing stills so uh, let's say you have a design stress resultant so you need to calculate these maximum moments which is your moment magnifier that we just calculated uh, We just calculated this moment magnifier 1.41 times by your moment 360 given in our examples that is 360 kilonewton meters so your final moments that you get it uh, for this particular c columns is 508 kilonewton meters and your axial load is given in examples 200 kilonewtons now we go back to that figures and find it out uh, our actual reinforcement you remember that uh, I said that there is an assumption that we make, that our assumptions we make, where was that figure? Okay, we made the assumption that rho equal to 0 0.01. If you remember that start of uh, uh, in that examples, we take rho equal to 0 0.01. Now that rho equal to 0 0.01 assumption is going to be valid here. That 508, so if you draw the line 508 and 2000, you will get around 0 0.0112 as a your reinforcement ratio. Reinforcement ratio is basically the reinforcement over the gross area, which is 0 0.012, which is very close to our assumptions, let's say 0 0.01, and it's again greater than 0 0.012. So that's okay. If it is less than assumption, then you might have troubles. If you are putting a extra little still, there is no harm. So it's very close to the 0 0.01. So we validate our assumption saying that in our actual moment 508 and 2000 kilonewtons give us this reinforcement ratio. So it's actually uh, validate all the assumptions saying that otherwise you need to go back and recalculate uh, everything like you can calculate 5MC and C moment magnifier and you need to repeat that whole process again. That is iterative process. So if this assumption, let's say we calculate this one 0 0.03 which is way off your assumptions you go back and increase this assume value, calculate those values again, and come back here what your actual uh, reinforcement ratio is. an iterative process, but here we are very close to our assume value, so we no need to do that iterative process. So finally, we know that our reinforcement ratio is 0 0.012. So longitudinal reinforcement that we need is a reinforce, as I mentioned, this is reinforcement ratio is your steel ratio area, and that is 0 0.02 times this gross area, that will give you the uh, uh, AS2800 millimeter square. So we can provide 3N28 bars uh, on the east face. I think uh, I think there is a Rio tables. If I can find that Rio tables, in that Rio tables, uh, there is a, uh, I think I can show it to you that Rio tables. In that Rio tables, and we also done this one, uh, how to find that uh, spacing or number of bars. So if you have a reinforcement of 2880 millimeter square, you can find how many bars of N28. And this is again assumptions that we are assume N28 bars. Generally in the columns, we use um, N28 bars. So if you know this pi by four times 28 square, uh, which is pi by 24, pi by 4 times 28 square, you get the 615 and this 2800 divided by 615, you are required almost 5 uh, bars. And if you need 5 bars, well, in the columns, we don't provide 5 bars. You need to equally distribute. So we let's say 6 bars uh, that we're going to provide, 3 bars on each side. So we provide six total bars six and 28 bars with the three on each face uh, so there is a minimum uh, spacing requirement uh, that dc if you go to the close 10.7.4.3b let me get back to you that close Ten point seven point four point three b uh, so that is the fitments now we're talking about. We found those reinforcements. Uh, now we need the fitments in your columns. Now for fitment spacing of the fitments that you have here, uh, minimum of DC of 10 dB. So that's I written. DC is the depth of your columns. Um, I think DC is the minimum dimension. Somewhere this one written here, DC is the smaller of the column cross sections dimensions. 
So if you have 400 and 600, in between 400 and 600, you should take DC as a 400. That is the minimum cross sections dimensions in your column. Times by that is the reinforcement. And we are using 28 bars, so 15 times 28, you will get 400 millimeters. So you have a fitments, uh, that fitments. This is your longitudinal bar, 4N bar, and these are your fitments. So the spacing of the fitments, that is not, that's I pictures, I explain what we sit on here. Now, we can use R10 fitments, R place at 400 millimeter center. So you have 400 millimeter centers, that is so on in the figure here. Now, there is a one more close that I need to explain you. There you go. Um, close 10.7.4.1. Uh, close 10.7.4.1, it says that um, you should um, you should have this longitudinal bar less than or equal to 150 milli 150 millimeters. Okay, if you if your reinforcement bar is greater than 150 millimeters, then you need to use these internal ties. Okay, I think uh, there was here you go. At least every alternative bar, which bar has a space of 150 millimeters or less. So if you have a your longitudinal reinforcement space less than 150 millimeters, you don't need to provide these um, uh, internal ties because this is a, about the confinement that they're going to talk about. So if your longitudinal reinforcements are greater than 150, you need to provide these internal ties. I think they are detailed here. Like um, how did you ties. decide the R10 um, fitments? Do you just always go with R10? Uh, generally, in the columns, we 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 normally provide uh, uh, fitments of ten or twelve, uh, yeah. R ten or R twelve. Okay. So that's the fitment size we use. Reinforcements on that range of uh, twenty eight, the longitudinal reinforcement. So this is the assumptions that R ten fitments are are we assume. Does it answer your questions? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So R ten or R are 12 fitments and the spacing of the fitments i i already showed it to you that because we have more than 150 i'm not sure the spacing you can calculate uh, how much spacing that you you needed if it is more than 150 i think in that case more than 150 we provide this internal ties uh, internal ties here 